Thanks, Doug. Uh, appreciate uh, everybody coming out here today. And, and uh, I know we're not doing these luncheons uh, weekly. Uh, so just a, a quick recap uh, to begin with here of the season uh, thus far. Obviously, an 0-3 start is not something uh, that, that we're proud of. Uh, but there's certainly a lot of really, really bright spots. And I've got two uh, guys here who are huge bright spots for our football team and our defense in general. Uh, we've really played great defense. Um, we really haven't put together uh, a full 60 minutes uh, on either side of the ball. And that's one of the things that we were really working hard on uh, this past uh, uh, off week uh, of practice, getting back to fundamentals and, and working on developing more consistency. But uh, right now, uh, the defense uh, is really, really playing well, and it started against uh, a tough Towson team, which we took to overtime, and, and uh, uh, that followed with really, I, I would say, three quarters of a great defensive uh, uh, outing against uh, VMI. We, we struggled a little bit early. We, you know, we didn't come out like we should have. I think part of that, uh, not all of that, but part of that was due to, to the rain and playing on grass for the first time, which got muddy and slick. I think it took us a little bit longer to uh, adapt to uh, the conditions uh, than uh, certainly VMI. Uh, once we did, I felt like we outplayed them for certainly the second half and, and most of the second quarter. Uh, obviously, going up against a really talented uh, Central Michigan football team uh, two weeks ago, that was a great trip uh, to Michigan. Uh, I think we we played our our tails off uh, really for over a half of football, uh, played our best football uh, uh, thus far uh, against uh, by far and away you know the most talented uh, opponent that we've seen uh, thus far as well. So uh, really pr uh, proud. Uh, in second half they wore us down a little bit, but really the majority of points that they scored uh, to run away with it in the fourth quarter was done. Uh, with their second team offense going up against our second team defense and and uh, our, our second team defense really uh, you know but uh, I don't think we we stopped them in the fourth quarter they scored touchdowns every time that they had it but while the outcome was in doubt uh, we certainly played them uh, very very uh, you know toe to toe for almost three quarters of that football game uh, so defense is really driving our football team right now offensively we're much more inconsistent, and unfortunately, we've had the injury bug that that, that uh, is, had, has bit us a little bit more on offense than defense. Jake Guy, our, our center, was out against Central Michigan. Uh, he uh, did not play against uh, VMI the week before that, and unfortunately, we really struggled. We actually played, uh, from an efficiency standpoint, our best offensive game against uh, Central Michigan, we just weren't able to get the center quarterback exchange. And that's, you know, the, the, the most fundamental thing to offensive football. For a play to work, you have to have your center uh, quarterback exchange. And, and with Jake Guy out, uh, we really struggled. Uh, and it was unfortunate because uh, working when Ethan Grady went down uh, with a concussion, uh, Tyler Beverick came in. And we were getting our snaps under control, but Tyler started bobbling the snaps. Uh, they, they weren't the fault. Not all of them were the fault uh, of our, our center. Uh, certainly at the beginning of the game, yes, that was the case. But by the end of the game, we, we counted uh, 18 plays uh, of offense where uh, we either had a snap that rolled back or, or uh, one that forced our quarterback to step off of the midline to catch it and uh, or dropped snaps that were good in our our quarterback dropped it or just bobbled it, and that led to a lot of timing issues. And, and uh, so we really struggled with that. Um, you know, we've done a great job of, of uh, addressing that issue this past week in practice to make sure that it doesn't come up again. Uh, so certainly uh, unfortunate. Sean Quarterman, uh, you know, I, I bless his heart. I mean, he, he was the, the center uh, that was behind a lot of those bad snaps, but he had a tough, tough uh, – ask because the guy he was going up against is going to be drafted um you know in 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 uh, this coming year's draft should he not exercise his covid year of eligibility and and so that was part one part two he injured his shoulder and still fought through it as the course of the game uh went on as well knowing that uh, uh our third string center uh for the game would have to go in and he's a true freshman so we're, we're two deep on the offensive line but we're not three deep and so uh, I give Sean a lot of credit for hanging in there, but unfortunately the snaps just uh, weren't 
uh, you know, what it needed to be. So uh, Jake Guy has been back, has been practicing, uh, and uh, you know, we've certainly done a great job as an offense addressing that. Uh, aside from that, we, I'm really pleased with how things were going. Uh, that first half, uh, you know, we would move the football with uh, a, a decent amount of consistency. Uh, we were winning the time of possession. Uh, we just couldn't put the ball into the end zone. We, we kept getting stopped, uh, you know, right up to the to the uh, uh, end of the first half, which was actually a mechanical mistake made by the officials after we threw an interception. But a great job uh, out of uh, Damian Harris, our slot receiver, stripped the football and we fell on it, which resulted in a fresh set of downs for us, but it should have stopped the clock. Uh, and the officials started the clock uh, immediately, uh, not, I guess, recognizing that it was a change of possession, which is unfortunate there. But uh, uh, so here we are three games in. We've, we've shown some really good signs of football. We've competed really hard in all three of our first contests. And uh, we find ourselves a much better football team now than we were at the start of the season. Uh, but certainly not where we want to be yet. I think that's led to a great week of practice uh, during this past uh, bye week. Uh, guys, you know, getting back to basics and, and playing physical football and really pushing ourselves. And, you know, some guys who were banged up getting healthy, uh, getting them back and getting a head start uh, going into the Lafayette game. So it was a great week last year, I think, or, or this past week, rather. Uh, I think the bye week definitely came at a perfect time for us as we're getting ready for uh, our league schedule. And uh, before we get to Lafayette, again, I'll talk about the Lafayette game at the end here. Uh, we can open things up. Questions uh, for both of, not myself, but, but uh, for Gavin uh, and Blake as well. That was kind of a tough situation. It was actually me, Blake, and uh, Brent Jackson, one of our captains. We just had bad communication on one play, and we were all kind of spread out, and it was really three receivers against two defenders. So we just had bad communication on that play, and that's something we had a players-only meeting yesterday with just the players, and we kind of talked through it, and we was like, bro, we need to do a better job practicing harder uh, and communicating more. Uh, Coach Bowers always, uh, also got on us yesterday in our team meeting, basically saying we need to communicate with each other more and just talk through things. So that was like a communication error, and there was three receivers on two. And Brent almost still made the play, but he just tipped the ball and the receiver caught it. So they scored. I mean, that we really didn't get affected by that. We were looking to bounce back, and we still played hard when we came out at halftime. So I don't know. It was just a communication error, something we got to work through. Little things like that happen, so you just got short-term memory and move past it. I mean, he was definitely a talented running back, big, strong guy, as you said. Um, and obviously, he had, he's had a great career so far, um, so props to him. But um, compared to the guys we played, I wouldn't I wouldn't say he's anything that we haven't seen um, just in the Patriot League or our out of league opponents. Um, but he's definitely going to get a chance to play on Sundays, and he was he was good good running back. So we did. I'd say we say we uh, gave it to him for a good half. So. Um, my parents uh, have always been there for me. They've been, I don't think either one of my parents have ever missed a, a single game from, from Little League to, to now. Um, and so they have just been um, a, a rock for me, always there for me, always supporting me in anything I choose. Um, so they've definitely been, uh, been there for me, supporting me in my pursuing this where I'm at now. 
Um, and also my high school coach did a great job um, getting me recruited and supporting me also throughout that um, time. Uh, I will also say my parents uh, played a big influence in my life. Ma the main reason I'm here today in front of all of y'all, so I thank them for everything they've done for me. And I also want to give a big shout out to uh, someone I know called Daquan Davis. He played football at Penn State. He's older than me. I look up to him. He's like my brother, but he kind of showed me my way in this football world. And he kind of like, he was my trainer at one point in time and then he stopped training and started doing other things. But he got me here today too as well. And when I first started taking football seriously, he told me one day you're going to get a scholarship to play at the D1 level. And he stuck to the plan and I'm here today in front of y'all. So I thank him for that. And I thank my parents for everything. Uh, I like their facilities a lot. They had a nice little uh, indoor uh, facility when we first got there. I, I warmed up inside. We were kind of on a time rush. We were rushing to get out to the field, but it was definitely nice. They had a nice weight room, so I liked it. I've got high hopes for what we have coming, so I know these guys got some, got some good brains together. Coming up with it, I know they're going to do a good job, so. Um, I remember sitting in my, uh, I think I was in kindergarten at the time, and uh, one of my best friends, he was talking about uh, his flag football game from the weekend. And I remember sitting there, and I was so confused. I was like, why is my parents not having me out there doing that? I think I went home that night and told mom and dad I was playing football next year. So that's just kind of, and so ever since I was in first grade, I played football. So, yeah. Uh, I really started out playing basketball. I can still play to this day. But uh, just playing I didn't play football at first. I was kind of scared that I would get hurt. So then my dad finally put me in football. And my first year, I was so bad. Like, I was, I was terrible. And then the next year came around, and he was like, yeah, you're not playing this year. And I got upset. I kind of, like, took that personal. We talked about this before. Like, I took that personal. And then I went out there that next year. My, I think my aunt had signed me up because he wasn't, he wasn't going to sign me up. So my aunt had signed me up, and I went out there. And I just gave him my all. And ever since then, I've been good. So, yeah. I mean, compared to last year, um, just the confidence and the uh, the energy around the team is is ten times better. Um, the senior leadership, Gavin and uh, his fellow classmates, are just just great leaders, great guys to be around, um, and always lifting the team up, keeping the team positive. And I think from the top down, just um, the confidence and and we go out there and we're not scared. Like last year, I feel like um, we were young, and I mean, majority of the guys playing were even freshmen and sophomores um, who hadn't had a lot of experience. And uh, we were just intimidated and um, not, not confident in ourselves. And this year, um, it's a very similar feel to my freshman year, our spring season. We had also had uh, great senior leadership. Um, and we were just going out there and playing football, playing, doing what our coaches um, were telling us to do. And so um, we're, we're pretty excited going into this weekend. Um, looking forward to having a chance to get that first win, first Patriot League victory. And um, I don't think anybody's thinking anything other than win. So. Uh, yeah, just to go off what Blake said, I think it's just better energy now. Like, we're trying to stay positive. Yes, we are 0-3, but the main thing is just staying positive, short-term memory, like I said before. And also, like, I think the guys understand now, like, we can't lose any more games. Like, we have to win out. We have to go eight straight. So I think we're locked in now. We play Lafayette this weekend, homecoming. I think the guys are ready to go. Just staying focused and forgetting the things that happened in the past. Just keep moving forward one week at a time and win. That's what we have to win. So. Uh, since the first time I stepped on campus here, uh, it just felt like the place I wanted to be. Um, meeting the guys on the team at the time and the guys in the locker room, um, it just felt like the people I wanted to be around, the place um, I could see myself for the next four years. And um, so far, I made the right choice from, from where I'm at. So, 
Uh, so when I was first getting recruited out of high school, I was recruited by every school in the Patriot League except for Colgate, but all the other schools were recruiting me, and Bucknell was the first school to actually offer me. So I think Coach Susan was the coach, head coach at the time, so I thank him for believing in me, and I was like, why not come here? He was the first one to get, actually give me a chance and believe in me, so I decided to come here. Yeah, uh, it means a lot. I missed out on a lot last year. We didn't do as well. So right now I'm just trying to show everybody that I'm a better player than what I was before, and I'm healthy now. So that's the biggest thing, staying healthy and just focusing on winning and doing what I can to help the team be as successful as possible. Uh, as of right now, I'm not sure. So right now I'm try I have my COVID year because I graduated this year, so I have a COVID year. And then right now I'm working with Dan Isis to try to get my year back from last year because I played in one game over what I could to get the medical hardship waiver. So right now we're just working on that, but I'm not sure yet. I could possibly come back here. I'm not sure yet. I haven't really been thinking about it. I just want to finish this season strong and see what happens. So. Yeah, it, it's a uh, obviously a huge football game for us uh, against one of our rivals and, and a, a game that uh, I think is a huge barometer for, for how uh, we are going. This is our first opponent uh, that we're going up against that we can say uh, we are as experienced uh, as. Uh, and, and that's something that you know, we haven't been able to say that in our first three games. We are a much more experienced football team. Uh, than we are or were a year ago at this time. But when you still compare, because all of these other teams have had so many players back using a fifth and sixth year of eligibility, and I've mentioned this before, I mentioned it last year, you know, college football is the oldest, most experienced it's ever been in the history of college football. So uh, we felt really good about being an experienced football team headed into this season, but we're still going up against even more experienced football teams. Uh, can't say that's the case uh, of Lafayette. Now, yes, they do have some COVID guys on their team back, uh, some outstanding football players uh, talking to, to some of the guys here earlier. Um, you, you've got at least four players on Lafayette's defense uh, who I think would play at any of the institutions that we just played. They would be starting. Uh, so they have some very, very talented football players uh, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, and and that is shown in 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 their games. They played in a lot of uh, low scoring games, with the exception of William and Mary. Uh, they played really tough against Temple. Uh, they played extremely tough against Sacred Heart, and then they played a huge defensive battle game uh, on Saturday at Penn and and lost twelve uh, to nothing. So. Uh, they're very young on offense, and they're young on uh, the corner position on defense, but they're playing very good defense, and their offense has been similar to us, just inconsistent. Uh, and they're uh, starting a freshman quarterback. He was injured uh, in Saturday's game against Penn, so we don't know uh, what his situation is. We believe it's a knee injury, um, so I think it would be doubtful to say that we would get him, but uh, we're going to still prepare uh, for him. We know they still have a Sean Davis who started against us last year and played very well uh, as an experienced quarterback. He just was beaten out uh, by uh, one and perhaps two quarterbacks. So we're, we're, we don't know who we're going to see at quarterback, but uh, we do expect this to be a very much a defensive battle, uh, a battle for field position, a, a battle where turnovers are going to be crucial, generating turnovers on defense and protecting the football on offense, which fortunately that's one of the things we've done fairly well on offense this this year as, as we've protected the football. Uh, so that's going to be really the challenge that we have in, in this game. But it's going to be a great barometer because this is a good football team. 
uh, that, again, has some players that are a lot younger than, than, we're, with a, than we're throwing out there at starting positions, but a lot that are older than, than we do. So I think it balances out. I think it's uh, two teams, their strengths uh, are very similar. Uh, and, you know, their lack of consistency uh, with, with us and Lafayette are very similar there as well. So I think it's going to be a really good football game, uh, especially if you enjoy defensive football. Uh, I know that uh, us having the extra week to prepare against them, hopefully we will be the more healthier team uh, and having an additional couple of practices to prepare uh, for this game can give us a, a, a huge advantage as well. And then finally, uh, hopefully we get a great crowd out there on Saturday. The weather cooperates, and, and we can have a great home field advantage at Christy Mathewson Memorial Stadium. Uh, so with that, I'll open it up to questions. Yes, yeah. So right now, um, the the quarterback position, as I mentioned earlier, Ethan Grady is is back from from his concussion. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Tyler Beverett suffered a sprained ankle uh, in the game. He's recovering from that. Nick Septenfelter uh, has had a broken wrist on his non throwing hand that he's working through and has been practicing as well. So uh, so we're becoming healthier at that quarterback position. Uh, I mentioned Jake Guy earlier, uh, who should be back for this football game as well, and 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 that's that'll be great. Uh, Zach Tarburton is coming off of an injury and should be ready to go on the offensive line. So uh, we're feeling like the only player that that will be without uh, on the offensive side of the ball is Mason Muir, uh, who we've had out, who's been out for the last two weeks, and and uh, might be able to. I don't want to rule him out, but I think he's. He's doubtful uh, for the game, and, and because he's been out, uh, he hasn't had a chance to practice yet. He's going to have a lot of rust uh, on him as well. We're healthier uh, on the defensive side of the ball. Like I said, just in general, the overall, all, overall health of our football team compared to where we were a year ago. Uh, I mean, we don't have any players uh, that are out for the year right now. A year ago at this time, I believe we had six that had been lost for the entire season. So, so very, very thankful that we're, we're in the position that we are from a health standpoint. Yeah, yeah, so we, we definitely need to do that. This is a, a, a defense that is very good against the run. Uh, you know, they, they really did a good job. The only team, uh, like I said, that uh, has moved the ball running uh, against them was William and Mary, and they've got a very athletic running quarterback. They did some triple option stuff, and they were able to to get some open up some big holes uh, in the run game. So that's going to be the challenge for us. Uh, we have to generate consistency uh, in our short to mid passing game, uh, particularly because their pass rush is is so fierce. We need to get rid of the football uh, early and on time. We know there's going to be some single coverage. Uh, matchups where they've got their young corners against our uh, receivers. And if we can pass protect, that's that's going to be a, another big key for us is, is are we able to take what the defense gives us, but when they bring pressure and they put those corners in single coverage, we've got to be able to win against them for those bigger plays, those bigger chunk plays. Uh, and, and if we can do that, uh, we're going to be able to score points. We've been able to do that against Lafayette in the past, and that's that's been uh, you know one of the keys to the last time they came up uh, uh, to our house. Um, we were able to to have a really good offensive day against them. Um, in some cases, yes. I think there's more of a, a, a difference on the style of offense uh, that they're running. They're, they're more of a shotgun team now than they were a year ago. Uh, they were under center. Um, they didn't ask their quarterback uh, to do any type of zone reads where the quarterback would pull and run based off of the reaction you got out of the opponent's defensive end or a blitzing outside linebacker, that sort of thing. So. Uh, all, the majority of their changes have been on uh, the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, it's a new defensive coordinator. The scheme has changed where they're playing more four-down fronts 
uh, than they are three down fronts. But Malik Ham is their best player. Um, you know, he was one of the guys that we've always talked about. Uh, you know, he's a great defensive end. Uh, he's always played in a 50 scheme, um, which changes how defensive ends are. They're using some more four down schemes and kind of turning him loose uh, as a defensive end in their four down scheme. Uh, but their coverages haven't changed. I think there's there's more carryover from what they did uh, a year ago uh, in the coverages that they used uh, as opposed to what they're doing now. And they're still not, they haven't exclusively switched to a four down front. They still play a lot of odd defenses, three down defenses. Um, they're very multiple. Uh, and I think they can be multiple because they do have so many, you know, th their young guys are at corners and of most of the, the positions, uh, nothing against uh, cornerbacks in, in, in the house here, Gavin, um, but it's it doesn't really matter that much what type of front you're running when you're a corner. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. You can be very multiple into corners. It's It still can be a fairly simple game plan, uh, but they've got experience at safeties and at linebackers and on the defensive line. Uh, that's where the, the all of their experience is on defense, and that allows them to be very, very multiple and still execute the, a lot of different schemes. Yeah, I just getting back to, to the basics, you know, things that after three weeks of football, you know, you get so involved with the game planning process and going out and executing. It's all focused upon the opponent that you're seeing that week. And we're able to take a step back. And while, yes, we did uh, install some things for Lafayette earlier on in the week, we were just out there practicing, going back to basics, more individual uh, with your position coaches, doing you know basic fundamentals, uh, getting back to some good versus good, just our offense versus our defense, not simulating another uh, opponent's offense, defense, or special teams, just going out there and having that competition uh, is something that you don't get enough of once you get into the heart of a regular football season where there's just not enough periods in, in a practice or enough practices in a week to, to, to be able to get all of that in. And so it was great to get back to those fundamentals, uh, to get back to work on those little things so that when we do go out, regardless of the opponent that we're going to see, we're going to execute at a higher rate. Well, I, I think this is just going to be a great football game. I, I think w with our players, you, you, you can say all you can about every game matters because every game does, and you want to win every football game. But then it's Patriot League, and you know that this is for a ring. This, this is a championship football game. You really couldn't say that about Central Michigan, right? You're excited for different reasons. You're playing in a big stadium against a huge crowd, and it's against an FBS opponent. And, and a level higher than we're at. But this is a championship football game. We're back at home. And then you add on top of it, it's not just a championship football game. It's going up against one of our rivals, a team that we don't uh, particularly like very much. We, we take great pride in, in defeating them, and, and that takes it to an even greater level. So as uh, excited that I've been for any of these games up so far this season, uh, I'm even more so, and I know our football team is as well because of, of all of those elements. Back at home, it's a championship football game, and it's going up against a rival. Uh, I'm excited just to see how we come out and, and play our best football game of the season.